So recently I've been considering uh, switching to Alpine Linux for a lot of reasons. Um, but essentially Alpine Linux is a extremely small um, and security oriented um, Linux distribution. And when I mean extremely small, it blows, if you thought Void Linux or even Arch Linux was, you know, small, Alpine Linux blows out of the water. It's incredibly small. Um, um, but by default, it uses BusyBox instead of the GNU uh, core utils. And it also, um, by default, uses the Muscle C library. Whereas Void Linux, um, you get a choice between the GNU C library and the Muscle C library. Alpine just uses Muscle by default. And um, I think it's pretty nice. Um, but yeah, it's a very small and robust um, Linux uh, operating system. And I'm going to be uh, go ahead and showing you how to install it. So I'm going to go ahead and open up a terminal. And I have the Alpine disk image right here. And if you were installing this on an actual machine, you would, you know, flash this to a USB drive or whatever and actually, you know, boot your USB drive and install it. But I can't do that um, and record it. So I'm just going to go ahead and use a um, virtual machine to show that. So. I'm going to go ahead and use QEMU for that. And we're going to go ahead and create a disk image. So we say QEMU image create, and the format is QCAP2. And let's just call this alpine.qcow2. And we're going to make it, let's say, 10 gigs in size. Okay, so now we have our um, 10, gig 10 gigabyte QCAP2 file. And let's go ahead and start up our virtual machine. So I'm going to say, QEMU system x86. And I say enable KVM. Um, and most machines should have KVM, so yeah, um, this just makes makes your virtual machine faster. Um, we're, we're gonna give it four gigabytes of RAM. And we're gonna set the network uh, on our virtual machine. In this case, it's gonna be user model equals virtio. And we're going to go ahead and specify what our hard drive is, or our um, hard drive file, if that's, if that's the case. Um, and we're going to say file equals alpine.qcal2. And media equals disk. And input file equals virtio. And now we're going to specify our CD-ROM. In this case, it's just alpine standard, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. So, when I run this, it should start our virtual machine and boot up into Alpine Linux. There we go. Okay, so one thing you notice is that Alpine Linux actually uses um, OpenRC. And I personally am a, a more of a run it um, guy myself, but I don't mind OpenRC. Um, I, I, I prefer not to use systemd, but OpenRC is okay. So uh, to log in to this um, USB or to this disk image, we just sign in as root. And to actually start the setup, we just type in setup dash alpine. And it'll tell us to select our keyboard layout. So let's just say US. And then select variants. It's just US. And so now enter our system host name. I'm just going to put in alpine VM. That's going to be your host name for now. And we want to initialize our Ethernet. Yes. And do we want to configure it? No. So we'll go ahead and do that. There we go. And now it's going to ask for the root password. I'm going to give it the very secure password of password. And then that's going to warn me two week. Um, I don't really care. So I'll go ahead and uh, type it in again. And what time zone are we in? I'm going to say. Um, America, and what sub times in America are we in? Uh, I'm gonna say, let's say Detroit. There we go. So let's go ahead and set up. Um, do we want a proxy? I'm gonna say nope. And here is the entire list of all the mirrors for the um, uh, Alpine package repositories. And you can, you can select these mirrors in a lot of different ways. You can type in the actual number you want. Um, you can type in R to select a, just a random one. And you, or you can select F to, um, 
to find the fastest one out of all of these, the one which you know will get packages the fastest. I would recommend using F, um, but for the sake of this video and just speed in general, I'm just gonna go with the default, which is one. Okay, and then set up a user. I'm actually gonna go ahead and set up a user, and the user's name is gonna be Bryce. And the full name, I'm just gonna say my full name is Bryce V. And then the password for Bryce is also just gonna be password. Okay, and then SSH key, we don't have that, so let's go and do that. And with which SSH server do we want? So you actually get two choices for um, um, Alpine Linux. And you can choose between open SSH, which is usually the standard on the most Linux machines. We can also choose between that and Drop Bear. And Drop Bear, I have never actually used Drop Bear before, but from what I've seen, it's just a smaller, more trimmed down version of open SSH that's, I think, more secure as well. Um, but it, it also has uh, some features which are not in open SSH. Uh, but if you're just using SSH, you can also use Drop Bear. But for this um, installation, I'm just going to use open SSH. And now we actually go ahead and install this onto our disk. So I'm going to choose VDA, which is our 10 gigabyte disk. And how would we like to use it? Um, and it'll give us a bunch of options on how to use it. We can use it as a system disk, a data disk. We can encrypt it. And we can, uh, we can use L LVM or a bunch of other things. But I'm just going to go ahead and use sys, which is the most simple one. And this will go ahead and just format our drive and uh, install um, a boot a boot partition, a swap partition, and our main partition. And do we want to erase the above disk and continue? Yes. And this will go ahead and install the entire Alpine Linux system on our disk, as well as configure everything, you know, set everything up. And so after this is done, our um, machine should be ready. It just takes a moment. Um, but yeah, Alpine Linux is extremely small, so it shouldn't take really that long to set up. Um, just a few moments. Okay, there we go. It's at 100%, so now installation complete, please reboot. So we can just go ahead and type in reboot not rebot, reboot, and it will go ahead and reboot our entire system and uh, boot into our installation. And there we go. And just like Void, uh, just like void Linux, it boots up really fast. Um, so let's go ahead and log into our system. I'm going to say my user is Bryce, and the password is password. So now here's our installation. Now the, one of the great things about Alpine Linux is um, a lot of Linux dis distributions out there. Some of them are, you know, some of them are release-based distributions like Debian, where they have a um, a release every once in a while, or Ubuntu or Fedora or whatever. And they have distributions like Void Linux and Arch Linux, who are rolling release distributions, which don't have versions, but just uh, roll out the newest packages um, as soon as possible. The great thing about Alpine is Alpine Linux is actually both of these. Alpine is a release-based distribution, but also a rolling um, or a rolling release distribution as well. And you can actually um, specify um, what you want. So by default, it's a stable release-based distribution. But I want to turn it into a rolling release one. So to do that, what we actually need to do is we need to edit um, the file. I think it's Etsy APK. I think it's yeah slash etsy slash apk slash repositories and this is the list of our repositories in for apk which is the alpine linux package manager and one thing we also want to do is enable um uncomment this line and enable the community packages as well which will basically give us way more packages than the default but in, to actually turn our system into a rolling release rolling release distribution um, you have to get rid of this um, version 3.8, 3.18, and replace it with Edge, which is the name of you know the rolling release version of Alpine. Let's 
So we get rid of that and replace it with edge. And so now if we go ahead and save that. Uh, oh yeah, I forgot. We have to use root to edit this file. So let's go. Um, let's go ahead and rerun this as sudo. Um, I'm going to use password. And let's go ahead and uncomment this and replace this with edge. Edge. There we go. So now that is changed. So now to actually update APK, we just say APK update. Ooh, and we have our permission, permission denied because we have to use, you know, root or sudo or whatever. The thing is though, Alpine Linux does, act, does actually not have sudo installed by default. Instead, it has do as installed, which is um, a way more minimal and trimmed down version of sudo. And it's actually used on OpenBSD by default. Um, but here it is installed by default on Alpine Linux. So to do the same thing um, as sudo, we just say do as apk update. And we give it our password, which is password. And I'll go ahead and update that. And so, so now to upgrade our entire system to a sort of rolling release distribution, we say apk upgrade. And then we say dash dash available. And it will go ahead and what this will do is this will actually update every single one of our packages um, to the late, um, basically the latest rolling release version of them. Um, or if they're not, if they are already updated, they'll just re-download them and reinstall them. But yeah, this is this will actually take a while because it's uh, re-downloading the entire Linux kernel, which is um, pretty big. But yeah, what this will do is this will basically turn your Alpine Linux stable uh, or stable system or release system into a rolling release uh, system, kind of like Arch Linux or Void Linux. Um, and one thing about um, Alpine Linux is APK, the package manager. Um, I said XBPS, the Void Linux package manager is fast. APK is way faster. Um, I think it's, it might be my, my favorite package manager because it just finished upgrading the entire system right now. And it took like maybe not even a minute to do that. I think that's crazy for um, a package manager to do. So as you can see, our system is completely upgraded. Um, and now we're basically rolling release now. So um, um, Alpine Linux has, you know, any packages you can probably think, or most packages you can think of, like Hyman install Vim, or you can add Vim, and it'll go ahead and install Vim. Um, it has like majority of the packages you would ever want. I think I think it actually has more packages than Void Linux does, uh, if I recall correctly. But yeah, it's um, an incredibly robust, um, really small list distribution. I might switch to it at some point. I'm not, I'm still debating that. But yeah, it's an amazing Linux distribution. So that's how you install Alpine Linux. And yeah, I'll see you guys later.